Hi folks, uh, a lot of you are probably familiar with my very small HO scale model railway uh, that I have in my home office space. Uh, however, I've actually built a much, much larger railway in this space, and it can be found down here. So for those of you who don't know, this is OpenTTD, which is the um, modern open source reincarnation of Transport Tycoon, which was a classic game in the 90s and early 2000s, um, and one of the first computer games that I ever played. So um, I've been working on this really enormous map, it's, uh, that's, what is it, 2048 squares by 512 squares. Um, for quite some time, so um, I'm going to give you a bit of a tour around, but just first of all let's have a quick look, so um, it's currently the year 4662, um, <coughs> I started this network in uh, 1872, so look I'm not that great at maths, but um, that means I've been working on this map for about 2790 Transport Tycoon years, which uh, Google tells me are about 13 and a half minutes, which means I've been working on this map for about 627 real hours. Uh, now that's spread out over, I've got no idea when I started this, but it must be at least five years or so, you know, I, I don't actually play this all the time, I've got kids and stuff, so, um, but it's, you know, it's still quite a lot of time, let's face it. So I'm going to take you on a bit of a, a tour of this um, enormous network and um, this is going to be pretty unscripted and probably pretty unedited so uh, here we go. Uh, let's just take a look, we're currently at, at uh, this is North City Central here. Um, there are basically three major cities on this map and we'll start at the top and work our way down but uh, so this is the, the sort of the northern city uh, which has its own suburban network as well as uh, uh, country railway lines going out to all these other outlying towns. Uh, then in the middle of the map is the sort of main central city, which I don't really have a name for, but uh, also has an immense suburban network and that's this is the one that I built first. So um, in many ways uh, that was a bit more experimental but it's um, still pretty cool. Then way down the bottom is the southern city, which is pretty small and I haven't put that much time into it, but it does still have a suburban network. Um, and there are, of course, you know, interstate trains that run uh, between all of the cities. Um, you can certainly catch one train all the way from the north to the south. Uh, and there's also a lot of like big um, intercity uh, freight trains as well. Um, anyway. North City Central. Um, I originally built this junction very simply with just, it was entirely flat, just with ladders going in both directions. Kind of inspired a bit by um, a Zurich in Switzerland. But uh, over time I did add a few flyovers in the middle there so that inbound trains can jump over the top of certain outbound trains. So just over here, there's a couple of suburban lines that go through these tunnels here. Um, up here is this big port station, which um, there we go. There's a container train departing here, which will head all the way to somewhere. I don't know the other city. Yeah, the central city. Um, so there's a lot of traffic that comes in here. There's uh, paper trains come in here, and there is a printing works there. Uh, so that's what generates the goods here. Um, so see a uh, cattle train there sneaking through the suburban platforms. That's probably meant to be going through the goods platforms, but it doesn't really matter there. Um, it's you know, waiting for that container train to clear and it will move forward onto the goods lines, which go around there. I'll show you where that goes in a minute, but go back here. There's sort of the main route out of the city goes down this way. Um, and we have uh, several pairs of tracks here. Now, first of all, this is um, I'm using the Japanese um, 
train and track set essentially. So um, the prototype is uh, three foot six narrow gauge, um, and these are all you know Japanese prototype trains. So there's also a standard gauge system on this map, uh, which you can see there. There's a, a bullet train arriving there, because uh, just like in Japan, I have bullet trains which are standard gauge. So um, anyway. Um, so there's the main standard gauge main line which heads south there and then there's the main uh, narrow gauge line and there's also a local line and another line there which goes off to the airport. Uh, so that all goes down to this station here um, and then through these massive tunnels there's a hole there just because you can't have signals in tunnels and I needed another signal block there. Um, and then yeah, the main line basically continues this way. There's a lot of um, uh, dedicated express tracks and things which have evolved over time to make things as efficient as possible. And we come down here. Actually, no, we're not gonna go down there yet. Change my mind. Uh, over here, this is a big coal transship yard, so there's a whole lot of short coal trains that come in from various coal mines in this area, like this one here, um, which discharge their coal just into this transship yard. And then there's a whole bunch of long coal trains which load up here and take it halfway down the map to a power station. Um, over here is the main city airport, which has its own big airport station. Um, so that connects up here to the main station. And then basically, as you can see, there's just like loads of other suburban lines everywhere. There's also a big tram network. I'm not really gonna talk that much about the trams because they're probably quite hard to see on the screen. Um, but yeah, all the big cities have tram networks too. Um, little suburban power station there. Let's plant some more trees here. Uh, anyway, so let's go back up to the port for a second. There's a big paper train arriving there. Um, so a few goods trains waiting. Um, so the, another paper train. Um, the goods lines go around here underneath, oops, underneath this little CBD here and basically bypass all of this suburban area can see them down in the hole there. Uh, and then they go around here, jumping underneath everything, over here, and then jump across to the southern side there, and slow, eventually give access to the main southern lines there, so it's all fairly separated. Um, this is like a bit of a like big outer suburb here. Got a lot of like triple and quad track sections in the suburban area to allow express trains to overtake. Yeah, okay, so the big main line goes down here. Oh, I better do a quick detour over here and say what the hell's going on with this. Same kind of thing, coal trans shipyard. This one is absolutely enormous. They're 40 square trains um, and they run coal all the way nearly to the other end of the map. Um, so it's really, really big bulk transport. Um, and a lot of the trains like this one have uh, helper locomotives in the centre of the train, just like often happens in real life. Anyway, let's jump over various main lines, continue this way. Oops, looking a bit busy there. And we're coming to the outer suburbs of the central city here. Uh, this junction is a pretty big mess. It's one that's just evolved over a long time without any real planning, so let's not look too closely at that. Um, a good bit of overtaking there, a high speed train overtaking a grain train which is coming on suburban lines. And this is the main central station here. So um, basically we've got this CBD which is fully served by trams. There's a suburban city loop which goes from the, the elevated suburban platforms here, around there, up over there, over that way, 
Uh, there's also a few lines that branch off from the loop there. Those of you who are familiar with um, Melbourne, where I'm from, uh, probably see a bit of Melbourne design influence here. Uh, then there's a bunch of uh, through platforms, which are for country trains and some other suburban trains. Um, they run out to various different areas there. This is the main port train terminal. Um, the airport for this city is over here. You can see there's an express port train route that runs up there. Uh, and this is served by several platforms on different lines. Um, and then there's also the narrow gauge suburban line which comes down this way, goes back into the city along there. Oh, there's a, uh, a rail fan tour going past. I uh, have quite a lot of preserved steam locomotives and as well as diesels and electrics from earlier in the game. There's another one right there. Um, <clears throat> I've sort of built a few islands and kind of like extended the suburbs out onto islands in a few places because I was running out of space. There's another one here. Um, then there's like sort of this enormous lake which has loads of boats on it and there's this big island in the middle um, which has this kind of single track suburban line with quite short trains running on it. And there's some of the port trains flying through there. Uh, but there's narrow gauge main lines that go around the entire uh, lake edge and there's also a lot of suburban goods and that kind of thing. And I've got this thing here, which this is a very bad example, it's not currently working, but I'm going to send that back into the depot. Uh, this is my uh, railfan tour distributing system which is I've set up to basically generate random interesting trains that go out and travel around the network um, so basically there's a whole lot of trains in this depot some of them are just sitting there but um, you can see a lot of them have got green lights all waiting to go um, what they do when they leave the depot they have to go around this loop through that platform and out this way like that train's doing before they can begin their trip uh, and what stops them just coming out constantly is that there's this train um, which makes a continuous loop sits here and loads coal goes around in a loop dumps the coal back in the same place runs out and back in again just to sort of you know so you can get a new order and then does the same thing so it's constantly in this loop and holding up the other trains coming out which means that they only very slowly come out and then there's a regular service train here coming to pick up coal so while that is there loading um, the steam train won't pick up anything so uh, it just kind of slows the whole process down and, and makes it a bit more randomized and um, interesting and it works most of the time but every now and then it gets uh, a bit clogged up anyway uh, so heading further south that's like the big uh, food processing plant farm destination area just a bit of a mess uh, up here there's like a alpine area with heaps of plantations and coal mines um, oh, there's another very long goods train so um, I should say that like uh, one of the problems with having a map this size is that trains take literally years and years and probably sometimes decades to reach their destination uh, so a lot of them actually run at a huge loss and sometimes they make a lot of money when they actually get there but overall this entire network doesn't make money and I sometimes have to cheat to um, boost the cash back up again um, because I've really made it for fun not to actually play the game properly and make money so um, and I think a lot of trains that have multiple locomotives on them um, the running cost doesn't even out and they, they all lose money as well. Anyway, um, lots of places like this where you can clearly see the uh, history of I started with a few stone bridges and then the railway slowly expanded and eventually I put them higher up to um, so the trains don't have to drop down through that valley. Uh, that's like the main uh, coal destination, this is the power plant here, um, where the coal trains come from that big coal distributor further back up the uh, up the map. Um, then 
And look, I'm really just focusing on the main areas here. There's loads of like little unelectrified branch lines and various things all over the place. But um, here, oh, that's interesting. I obviously closed this farm because of this uh, line because the farm closed, but now new farms grown there. So I'll have to uh, remember to repopulate that. Uh, it's another big sort of like fairly big city just in the middle of nowhere um, but it has its own kind of little suburban network um, and there's loads of black I think that's a goods train like a suburban goods train ducking through there and um, yep lots of other stuff then we go let's go this way there are some sort of alternative routes between these cities as well because there's just so many like country lines um, we come further down here and we get to this pretty cool spot with just a station on the edge of this uh, mountainside. Uh, again, slowly expanded over the years and you can see the, the bullet train platforms over there. Here comes bullet train. Um, and then this is the southern city, which we've finally arrived at. Uh, that's sort of the main station there. Um, this network does have a bit of a weird thing where um, there's these other platforms at 90 degrees there. There actually is no direct connection there anywhere. They are part of this line which goes down here to the airport and then runs up this way uh, and crosses back across and goes up this way. So it's kind of just a... that's a lot of coverage. Um, then this line out here was built much later and that's why it's like largely on bridges over the top of stuff and um, there's also the parallel um, bullet train line. Um, it might have had a, you know, Melbourne Skyrail project a little bit in mind when I was doing this bit. Um, haven't looked down here for ages so there could be like absolute chaos, I don't really know what's going on. Somewhere up here... Somewhere up here I have my train number one still in service, which is, you know, um, what did I say, nearly 3,000 years old. Um, it just runs like a little, oh, there it is. Um, so yeah, 2,784 years old, pretty impressive run. But, um, just does a little sort of tourist run up and down this line. So anyway, that is my Transport Tycoon map, and isn't it huge and a bit crazy, but um, I really enjoy playing this game. I find it quite sort of uh, calming weirdly, which is given it's so sort of complicated, um, or it can be complicated when you get stuck into uh, building these junctions and things. You might have noticed that um, during this tour we haven't actually seen any major uh, you know, traffic issues. We haven't seen any major stuff ups where there's a train stuck anywhere, or you know, as you can see, like you can imagine, if if a train, say a you know long goods train, get, goes the wrong way and gets stuck in a suburban line or something here, you, you can end up with like huge flow and issues and trains just stuck for miles and miles and miles. And it does happen every now and then, but overall, I've been ironing out problems for I guess years, and um, it actually functions pretty well, despite the fact that it makes absolutely no money, like I mentioned before. But, um, uh, yeah, thanks for watching.